This book is called A Major Adjustment, and your first book was called A Minor Adjustment. So this is the follow-on story, yes. uh, how a remarkable child became a remarkable adult. Uh, why did you decide initially to write this? And you've written it with such brutal honesty, haven't you? It's not sugar-coated No, at all. no, I think what it originated from a radio series that we'd, we'd done, mm. and I was contacted by an editor who said, would you be willing to write the true story about having a child with Down syndrome disability? And my wife and I talked about it a lot and thought, well, if we are going to do it, it's got to be brutally honest and there hadn't been anything written really like it so we didn't want to sugarcoat it we didn't want to say it wasn't difficult at the beginning because it because of course it was and right from the beginning when you say when you looked at your baby daughter what did you think when they told you well of course at the beginning you're not told whether she'll walk talk achieve anything at all in her life and we'd both been social workers and worked with people with Down syndrome so the stereotypical view of them was still there and when she was born, it was a total shock to us. We didn't really, weren't expecting her. Um, and she had a heart condition, you know, holding the heart. And at the beginning, we thought it might be very serious. And I yeah. have to, to admit, and, and Sarah has read this, um, I looked down at her and thought, well, maybe the best thing would be if she doesn't survive. Mm. Now, that's a terrible thing to say about your but child. 26 years later, yeah. 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 And, and of course, I, what I didn't know was that some years later, Sarah read the book, mm. Uh, who knew that she was going to be able to read the book and came down and said, hang on a minute, Dad, what's all this about? <laughs> you, you wanted me dead. And I said, of course we didn't. And, uh, did you, did you, you just write the book by writing a diary every day? I mean, because it's so immediate, reading it. I think my wife kept, uh, kept uh, wrote lots of things down. And so, um, but, no, I think it was, it was quite cathartic, obviously, to write about it and things that you hadn't thought about in the early years. She was about three or four when I wrote it. And um, it has helped an awful lot of people, because you say people actually come up and say to you, I read your book and it changed my view. I, I, think, it, I think it really has, because it was so honest. And, it, mm -hmm. and, and I was once at a, a Down Syndrome Association Christmas carol uh, service, and a woman tapped me on the shoulder and said, uh, are you Andy Merriman? I said, yes. And she said, I read your book when I was pregnant and I knew I was carrying a baby with Down syndrome. I didn't know what to do. And I said, oh, gosh, what did you do? And she pointed at this young girl and said, there she is, there's my daughter, which is an extraordinary yeah. um, thing to happen. Um, what, what did you worry about most about Sarah's future? I suppose you think about... Um, First, one of the first things is what's going to happen to her when we're not around. Yeah. Yeah. You worry about what she'll be able to achieve, how she'll be treated. You know, because really it was only until about 1970 when people, children with Down syndrome, were actually were legally educated. They didn't have to be educated. Yeah. Sure. So um, it was all those long term worries. And so we were worrying about her job, her relationships, mm. what would she do? We were still changing her nappies. You well, know. Now, now you know you needn't have worried quite as much, maybe. No, she has if I'd known to, then. She's an extraordinary <laughs> young woman. And we'd love you all to, to meet her.